Hey, what's up everyone? This is the watch list video for, let me get this right, Monday, April 18th. Um, so on Friday, the SPY had kind of a flat open, but an ugly day. We'll look at the intraday real quick. It just kind of bled down from the open, little bear flag there, went lower, looked like it was going to recover and then fell apart into the close. Um, my biggest gainer, I like to throw at least a highlight in if I can, um, was this BWV, which that's not very pretty, is it? You see that little one spike, but it was a clean setup. I'll take Friday's candle out of it, and it was just one of those that I put in the video that, hey, this thing was 60, and now it's uh, 6 or whatever that price. Yeah, now it's 6 something. It goes on bounce watch. So let's fast forward um, to Friday morning, and I'm going to zoom in so we can see it a little better. So there's the open, and it opened at 624, and that was the early high. Sold off like it always does, but then right in here, um, during this candle, keep in mind this is a five-minute candle. So during this candle, I put out the idea that I liked this over the high of day. I said this would be the first break of its 15-minute high, um, and I don't know how many it is. I'll, you know what? I'll switch to 15s, and we'll look at that real quick. So... Uh, remember, this was over 60, and it had the downside halt this day, right? And then opened so, and sold off the next, the rest of the day. Now, let me zoom into the following day after the big sell-off. There's the opening 15-minute high. Look to the right, never broke it. The next day, opening 15-minute high, it never broke above that, right? The next day, same thing, and the next day, same thing. So this thing just never broke its opening 15-minute candles high until, and now you can see it there, until um, Friday. So it paid off. To keep watching this thing, even as, as goofy as it was, it just kept selling. Um, I even called it as a potential Tokyo for those, um, you know, once it got the volume. Anyone in the room could have had it around 625, I think. Um, and then here's what it did the next five minutes. It went to almost 750. And as a day trader, these are some of my favorite um, results, right? When you get long and you get this big push. And that's kind of what, what we teach in our course is to look for things odd scenarios like this BWV that if it does meet your parameters, you should get immediate results. And that, again, that's exactly what happened. When it finally broke its 15, opening 15 minute high, which it did, these are five minute candles. So it did, I don't know about what, 35, 30, 35 minutes into the session, maybe 45 minutes into the session. First time it had done it since it was over 60 and you see what happens. Shorts finally say, uh oh, this thing's bouncing big. And so we got long right about here. And then it was a matter of literally just scaling out and I sold a big chunk over seven. I sold some others on the way up, but it was a nice little trade. And by the way, look what it did. Ended up rolling back over by the end of the day. I don't care. I'm a day trader. I got the setup. I made my money and then I move on. All right. So that was my, my best trade on um, Friday, even though right now the chart looks um, pathetic, right? All right. So what are we watching on Monday? Remember, I make my money between the bells. I'm in cash every night. So this is just some stocks that may give me an A plus setup. Um, on Monday that I can make some money in and be back in cash before the closing bell. So AIRG, um, very strong day and a strong close. We're going to watch that for some kind of follow-through setup. LGVN was the stock everyone was talking about a couple weeks ago. It had this big rip, then the next day it capped up. Um, somewhere in here they did an offering and then it kind of bled lower, right? But it's found support now. So let's go to 15-minute candles. And let's see, a few days ago it spiked to 1050-ish, pretty close. And then on Friday, it actually hit, well, here, 1048 and 1048. So that's super interesting to me. If it can get over, I'm just going to round up to 1050. If we break 1050 one of these days, that sort of meets our two-day high break the way we define it because you had a couple recent days that topped out at the exact same number. So that one's interesting to me over 1050. Um, NEXT, just a strong day on a week tape. We'll look for some follow-through there. LYRA has had some really nice strength. Um, had this kind of topping tail back here, but guess what? It's found its way right back up near that $8 mark again. So that one goes on long watch. IMTE looks very much like BWV, right? Um, the one we made money on. And I, I've had this on bounce watch maybe since this day, right? I saw this huge move, then two days lower on pretty low volume. And so I started watching it for a bounce. And look what it's done since. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a stock do this, but just like BWV, I'm going to put this on watch and see if we get an A-plus setup in it. But can I explain the action in it? No, I've never seen that before. Um, BRCC is a little bit of a different type of bounce play, and it is a stock that's been recently strong um, and kind of pulling back. Well, it is below the 20-day, but um, 
I don't know. That one's interesting before I turn back up. A solid three days down. We'll see. Keep an eye. Keep in mind, we're going to watch the overall market too. Make sure if something does give us an entry setup that we're not fighting a tanking spy at the same time. Um, now this GNS has only been trading for three days. I had a big rip on the first day and then just fell apart. Um, but I am going to put it on bounce watch because it's certainly an in-play stock. A lot of traders watching it. GNRC, not quite hurricane season yet. So I would like this more if this was the middle of summer um, with this chart because, you know, whenever uh, it looks like a big storm's coming, traders just pile into Generac, right? Um, but having said that, it has fallen for like two weeks straight right down until, let's see, these uh, January lows were around 250, 251.74 actually. And it actually broke these lows on Friday, but it is down to an area where it uh, held back in January. Um, and it's kind of overdone to the downside. It's fallen, what, 70, 80 bucks in, in about two weeks. So we're gonna keep our eyes on that one for a bounce play. VERU is really extended. Um, I almost feel irresponsible having us on watch because what I'd like to see is a couple days down, get back down to these moving averages. And then I would absolutely love it for a bounce play. Um, but since I'm a day trader, I'm going to have it on a chart, but I highly doubt I'll trade that thing because it's gotten stupid whippy over the last couple days. MDVL, I had on bounce watch coming into Friday when it looked like that, you know, I had this big two day move and then pulled back down to the moving average. I would love to be telling you, I would love this to be a prelude into me telling you I nailed this thing on Friday. I never traded it. And look what it was on bounce watch and look what it did. Um, going to intraday, I could argue, let me zoom in a little bit. This was the opening five minute candle. It topped out at 144, chopped around, stayed like what, in a dime range. I could argue had I been watching this, I might've tried the opening range breakout right there. Um, I would have never expected this kind of move, but anyway, uh, let's leave it at this. I'm gonna watch it all week because it made that very strong bounce and actually took out the highs from, uh, a f you know, from a few days ago on the big rally. So this thing is very strong. I wanna keep an eye on it. And then INDO, the baby, oil plays, and I don't mean baby oil like Johnson & Johnson baby oil, I mean like the small priced, smaller float, oil related stocks, um, all had a big rip on Friday. Hats off to Wayne, by the way, I think he got this in the $15, so I guess he noticed the small oil plays were going and was able to get in this thing um, in the like 1550 area or something. You look at his Twitter, you'll see where he got it. Um, and I think he got like 10 bucks a share on some. That's an, I never got involved in this one. <clears throat> but you see how well it held up too. So if oil itself is strong, um, maybe these things have finally bottomed, right? So we're going to keep it on that. You could watch HUSA, um, MARPS, um, MXC. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, INDO seems to be like the biggest mover of them all though. So anyway, that's the one I'm going to watch on, on Monday. And we'll see what oil does itself. Um, that's it for me. I hope you enjoy your Easter. And I'm actually making this video on a Saturday night. How sad is that? Um, so enjoy your Easter and I'll see everybody in the chat room on Monday.